no cure for COVID-19. And as researchers race to find potential remedies for the deadly contagion, we make sense of all the possible treatments and clinical trials. Joining us tonight from New York is Professor Peter Pitts, former Associate Commissioner of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. We've been uh, talking about uh, this uh, steroid drug, dexamethasone. Um, can it really cure COVID-19 patients? Uh, dexamethasone isn't a cure. It's a very powerful treatment, theoretically, for patients who are in the hospital on oxygen, on ventilators as well. Uh, we need to protect those most at risk. And this is a great leap forward in that proposition. If we can protect the older people, people who have respiratory issues, then as we begin to reopen our economy, we can protect those most at risk. Very important. Not a game changer for everybody, but certainly a step forward in treating those most ill. As with remdesivir, same thing. It's for patients who are mm -hmm. in the hospital. People should not rush out and ask their doctors for these treatments. These are for the most ill. That's what the WHO said. This is based on a 6,000 patient study out of Oxford. It's a very robust piece of science. Uh, we're studying it very carefully here in the United States. And I wouldn't be at all surprised that very soon it becomes a standard of care, dexamethasone, for patients on ventilators. This particular uh, steroid, uh, Professor, has been used by doctors since the late 1950s. What does it generally do? What can it really heal? That's right. This is not a new drug. It's been around for a long time and generally is used for people with lung inflammation. And mm. when you look at some of the more severe symptoms of COVID-19, inflammation of the lungs is right up there at the top of the list. So not surprisingly, a lot of researchers began to think whether these steroids could be used for the virus, and indeed, uh, dexamethasone can, and in co according to the Oxford research, has been used quite successfully. So it's pretty good news. It is pretty good news, but of course, uh, more clinical trials still have to be undertaken. And of course, uh, Professor, there are many vaccines being talked about from various drug makers around the world. In your view, which one or which ones is the closest to being used to cure COVID-19? You know, there are, there are about 130 uh, vaccine programs all around the world. I think we'll have a couple of vaccines. We'll have a vaccine that'll be best for children. We'll have a vaccine that'll be safer for older people. And we'll have vaccines for the general population. Uh, I don't want to pick a winner. Uh, there are a whole bunch out there. And I, but what I will predict is that we'll have a vaccine by early 2021. So I think as long as we can maintain smart social distancing, that we wear masks, that we uh, practice enhanced personal hygiene, uh, we can reopen our economies in smart and strategic ways before a vaccine comes early next year. Professor, that's still early 2021. Why can't we not have it over the next six months of 2020? Well, you know, I'd love to be able to snap my fingers and automatically invent a vaccine. Vaccine development is very hard. We're mm -hmm. working on that manufacturing vaccines is equally difficult and then it becomes difficult to figure out how you manufacture them to scale for billions of people all around the world and how do you prioritize who gets vaccinated first second third and so forth uh in usual times it takes about five years to develop a vaccine so what we're doing with covid vac covid19 relative to vaccine development is we're not rushing we're expediting we have to be smart and that's exactly what we're doing and Professor, President Trump has touted uh, previously the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine as a game changer. But now the U.S. FDA says it can longer be used to treat COVID-19 patients. Um, how significant is this move? Well, you know, the, the plural of anecdote isn't data. Uh, there's a lot of uh, anecdotes out there uh, relative to the uh, benefits of hydroxychloroquine and COVID-19, and some patients have been helped, no question about it. But the FDA has gathered a great deal of data that shows that using hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19 can cause a lot of very serious which is why they moved their emergency use authorization. However, this does not mean that it can still be used by doctors at their discretion for patients suffering from substantial consequences of the virus in hospital. We would like to thank you for joining us on The Final Word on CNN Philippines, Professor Peter Pitts, former U.S. FDA Associate Commissioner.